life is really gorgeous and it's really beautiful and it's really diverse and like that is okay that's okay that's a really interesting statement that you said that it, like it, it um we kind of get jammed up on what how we think people should live and i think that what you just said was really cool it's like it's okay that we're different the Move Entrepreneur Evolved Podcast. Get on it. And we're back with another episode of the Moved Entrepreneur Evolved Podcast. I am super excited today. We've got a lot going on. We've got an amazing guest. If you are going to watch this, make sure you like and subscribe. But today's guest, I was doing some homework, some exciting things, and I'm excited to introduce you guys to April Dawn. She specializes in six-figure launches. What's going on? How you doing? What's up, Jason? I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me on. I know I, I got excited. I, uh, you know, when you when you put on these things, you you tend to look at people's personalities, and then when you start looking in their lives, you start to learn a little bit about them. So I'm I'm excited to kind of unpack this uh, Miss April here. But I'm gonna launch this thing right away, and I think that I'm gonna kind of bring something up. You probably share when this is. But I'm going to read you something, and maybe you could share with me a little bit about what was going on at the time. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm so My, curious. Yeah, I'm definitely Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. I got the Windex here, so we could prepare to clean it up whenever we have to. <laughs> All right. So you, maybe you can tell me the month, but uh, here we go. My original 13-year Facebook account is gone for good. An email shut up in my inbox in early January asking me to take action on my Facebook account. Sure, Facebook, I thought I'll take action, except I couldn't take action Facebook wanted. As a nomad for the last decade, my phone number changed as often as I changed my pants. New countries, new SIM cards, new phone numbers, and my accounts are often the last to know. What is going on at that time in your life? That was actually, okay, so that would have been early 2022, and that, everything around that was uh, an adventure. I had spent uh, most of 2021 in Turkey, and so I had spent the year almost exclusively in Istanbul, and that would have been shortly after I got back to Canada. I left Istanbul because their economy collapsed, it like tanked really, really hard. It was in some pretty heavy disarray. And I was like, all right, April, it is time to bounce. And I got back to Canada. And just a couple weeks after I got back, um, I had just lost my Facebook account. And the SIM attached to my account was at least three countries old, if not more. And so there was just, there was just no way. I tried for a couple weeks to get it back and eventually just decided, or me and my social media manager just decided that we just had to start from scratch. And so that's what I did. But, well, well, I think yeah. that this is like a really interesting conversation because the ups and the downs of being an entrepreneur, going after it, there's these things we get hit with. What was the psychological thing that was going on in your head? Maybe you already had some things you could use as tools, but what was going on? Like, cause that's pretty intense, especially if you're growing an audience and you're helping people. Yeah. I mean, that audience had been developed and nurtured for the last seven years. And so there was definitely like, how do I describe that? There was definitely like a level of uh, shock remorse that was there mm. um luckily at that same time or not at the same time but for the last like year or so prior I'd been building an audience both on Instagram and LinkedIn and so I had like fallback spaces also recognizing that enough people had known me for long enough on Facebook that I would be able to rebuild and rebuild it relatively quickly um mm. which I had and I had help doing that and so it was like it was uh, sucky for uh, probably about a week. And I was like, all right, this is just what's in front of us. This is what we've got to get done. And so let's just do it. Wow. Um, I kind of look back and it looks like now we can go back maybe a little bit further. I think you were talking about behavioral stuff that you would work with before. Is that right? Kind of be behavior stuff that you did before? Yeah. So my first iteration of uh, my online business was conflict resolution. And I was teaching. Uh, uh, couples basically uh, to use how to use arguments to make the relationship stronger. Um, but that was like a space that I had moved out of uh, 
pretty solidly and had been out of for a handful of years. I mean, does that skill set still come handy in like uh, multiple, sure. oh, multiple yeah. areas and multiple spaces of my life? Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Did you come from a family that was like in business? I know that uh, we have in common. I I've been the nomad as well. I've, uh, I've had the SIM card multiple times. I know the, the program, you land, you fly, you land. You don't pick up the SIM card at the, at the, at the airport, you wait, you go to <laughs> the whole process. What about for you? Uh, when did an entrepreneur spirit, what was that thing that, that caught you early on? Uh, I actually started nomading. So that's like, that's a fun story. I spent three and a half years hitchhiking all over North America. And that's what turned me into an entrepreneur. Mm. Oh, we'll, we'll continue. What do you mean? You, you started, <laughs> I mean, what? Oh gosh, that was such a good load up. You, you, wait, wait, hitchhiking. What do we got? What do we got? Give us some details. Yeah. Here. So I spent three and a half years hitchhiking all over North America, and uh, what I learned in that three and a half year period was that I uh, was safe and that I was loved and that I was cared for in the world, and that whatever decision I made was going to be supported. And so uh, when I got to a point in my life where I had uh, this was while I was hitchhiking, not everyone who wanders is lost. And so while I was hitchhiking, I was uh, trying to learn and find a new different way to interact with the world in the world. And so that was uh, a large part of where I was studying conflict resolution. Like I had basically just turned my life into a Petri dish and yeah. was experimenting on my life with the world around me until I got to a point where I had understood that the skill set that I had developed could be useful for other people. And so at the time, I was in the redwoods of Northern California, and I was like, cool, I'm going to learn how to build businesses now. Mm -hmm. And that is just what I did. And I put everything, everything for a handful of years into just learning how to build online businesses. And eventually, I pivoted from conflict resolution into the very earliest iteration of what I do now. Yeah, because I think that um, going back, product launches, and, and we can kind of start to pivot. We'll, we'll obviously dive into many of these things. Um, but product launches are quite fascinating because they are a uh, kind of a catalyst in change. So if you can probably get somebody to get a launch going, they also can uh, add momentum to that launch. Um, when you started to do that, what what was your first concerns when you were working with clients or did you launch your first launch yourself did you start like putting these tactics to yourself did you find someone to kind of guinea pig I guess what was your what was your formula uh, so my first like my earliest iteration of what I do now was a combination of design tech and marketing and so I had a level of skill, I invested probably 20K up to that point. And I was like, okay, I can start to do this for people. And so I had a little side hustle. I did that for about six months. Within that six month period, I made uh, about twice as much as what I did in like the entire previous year. And I was like, okay, it's time for me to pivot. And uh, I just, I had a level of skill. And so was taking on clients and just, grew my skill set as time grew um yeah the first time uh, I cracked well we can go there's so many different places that we could go Let's with go. this story I mean yeah. the first time that I understood all the different elements that it took to do uh, six figure launches and then to do them on repeat on demand i was in istanbul actually um and uh, like i was so insanely excited i just wanted to run around and like yell but obviously no one is going to understand like i they speak turkish i speak english no one was going to understand what i was talking about but i was in four launches uh simultaneously while i had moved to the other side of the world so it's like mental note april do not do that again uh but i had two launches that had surpassed uh, 100k I think they both did around 118, 125, somewhere within that ballpark. And then I had two launches that were drastically less than that. And it was like mm. that contrast with the, the handful of other experiences that I'd had up to that point was like, oh, 
I understand what just happened here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be able to do this again and again and again and again. Mm-hmm. And uh, from there, I've just like kept going, obviously. Yeah. And you keep creating those foundational like triggers that give you the confidence to kind of do it again. I think it's super important. You know, you, you've you uh, sometimes I always like to talk about it, like get you once you got the grip. You know, once you can grip it, you can kind of, that sounds, you can grip it, you can rip it, <laughs> but you could basically, that's the idea. You know, you can, you can throttle through it. So I think that, um, putting yourself in that position to understand it enough and then be able to see that there's probably cycles as well. Um, what are some of the things that through your experience and, and going through these launches that you find on why people would not do a launch? Like what is what are some things that they put in their head on why a launch maybe isn't the, it isn't the thing for them? Okay, Not that it so can't be because everything is a mindset, right? <laughs> I guess I'm talking about the mindset. Not so much that it can't be done. I think I'm talking more or less what people think about launches why they wouldn't do one. Yeah, for sure, I get that. Um, so uh, live launches are uh, one of my favorite business models for a bunch of different reasons, and I like them. There's two main conversion events that we use in the online space. Like you're either going to do some variation of a launch, or you're going to do some variation of a webinar under some version. Like you're going to call it something. It's basically going to be a webinar or you're going to do some type of launch. And what I find is people just want shortcuts. Like they just want to be able to get to the thing that they want without putting in the work that's necessary to get there. And so I like live launches because it gives uh, the audience an opportunity to build a lot of like no trust like you can get uh, a cold audience into a live launch and close uh, 10k price tags without any sales calls if you have your launch structured like really solidly and it's like that to me is really sexy and the momentum that you build in environments like that is just outstanding like there are ripple effects that a business owner is never going to get to see or know. Like if you are launching to an audience of 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 people, like regardless of whether someone buys or not, they are going to learn something from Mm -hmm. that. And that is going to carry into their lives in ways that you're never going to see. And so if uh, the objective for a business owner is really to add value, to help people change their lives, to leave an impact, like it is my favorite kind of business model. Which is the the formula of being able to make, make an impact. I think that's, I think that's really important. And when you say, um, cause I think this is important to kind of talk about. And a lot of people that may see this and talk about like doing launches, we always talk about the work, you know, it's like, oh, you know, they're not willing to do the work. Maybe we could talk a little bit about not so much what the tactic of work is, but what is the work they're not willing to put in? And when I say that, is it people don't want to go out there and build the lead magnet? Do they not want to talk to customers one-on-one over and over again? Um, wh- what is that work that they don't want to do? I think here, like here, to build a business from zero to a place where it can hold and sustain multi seven figure or sorry, multi six figure launches, we're working on seven figure launches, haven't cracked it yet, but we're working on it. Um, but to, to go from zero to a space where you can hold multi six figure launches, there is a body of work at each different stage. So Mm. if someone is like zero to 5K, what I would generally recommend is like they work on their skill set and they get really good at the thing that they are here to do, that they get really good at who they are serving and who they are helping. So not really good at that, but just have a deep understanding of who the audience is that they are helping and serving. Um, That means like market research conversations. That means a lot of sales calls. In the beginning stages, it means dealing with a lot of no. And that in and of itself can be uncomfortable and hard for people. Um, There is not like not necessarily like a lot of audience building at the zero to 5k level like really you can have a super small audience but if you are nurturing those people you are understanding how you can serve them like they're like that in itself is a body of work just right there 
But once someone gets to a place where they're like 6K months, 10K months, 12K months, something like that, again, like there's still a body of work, especially if we're talking about building a business where it can systematically sustain multi six figure launches. It's like, it, there's going to come a point where you are going to start needing to build systems in your business where just posting and throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks is not going to be the most sustainable mm. or scalable strategy. And so at the point where someone is like 6k months to say like 14, 15k months, I mean, at that point, yes, building a lead magnet, building a lead gen funnel, like working on different traffic sources, working on organic systems that allow you mm -hmm. to maintain visibility without having to constantly be there. There's gonna be work on starting to build a brand. There's gonna be like working on your offer, improving your positioning in the marketplace, increasing your prices. Like there's just a body of work that's there. And uh, I mean, uh, it's a lot to hold. As like entrepreneurs, it's not just the work that we are holding. It is what's going on in the world, what's going on in our personal lives, what's going on with the people who we love. It's just, it can be a lot to hold. It takes a level of resilience and persistence and determination and tenacity that is not always easy to be consistent with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have a really good thing that um, I was kind of going through here and I, I'm in agreement with you on this one. And the, I have a few reasons for this moving, go back and forth, this is, but You'd said, resist, resist the urge to automate your version one of whatever oh, yeah. it is. And I was like, this is, this is a really important thing because a lot of people, they tend to go out there and buy all these different automations and these systems and they buy all these things. And so it's almost like you have the vehicle, but you don't know how the fe the car feels. And I think that it's, you know, uh, let's say you have somebody that's a driver and they kind of don't understand the car, but then they want to get somebody that's, you ever see those rally cars and then they have like a passenger and then they do those racing and the guy's like, turn right, turn left. If, if the guy that's on the side of the car, who's the navigator, he can navigate you all you want, but if you don't feel the car, you, you know, it's a, if you don't feel the turn and if you don't feel it kind of becoming you, what ends up happening is you don't have any instincts. Do, do you also right. find that as well? I really love the analogy that you just laid out. And I just want to ask, uh, do you like, do you drive like race cars? Like, is that a hobby of yours? Is that a thing that you do? No, but um, uh, it, it kind of bringing the question on me as a martial artist. So I, as a fighter, okay. um, fighting Muay Thai, doing jujitsu, um, being somebody that's close to things, um, also a motorcycle rider, ridden Harleys all over the place. For you to be able to feel something, there's small little things that'll happen that you won't mm -hmm. recognize unless you're a part of it. Yeah. And what I find is that a, a lot of, and I've done this too. I've tried to build businesses like a way, <laughs> you know, like right. I'm going to build this business, but it's going to be a way. And I think that your comment here, resist the urge to automate version one is people probably not wanting to commit. I, I I can give myself the same thing. There's no guru right here that's going to tell you that they're not, they're not the same. But I think that the idea is that, I don't know if you've ever been so in tune with something that you're like, it's off, something's off. Yeah. And I think that yeah. what you're saying here is that if you're not putting it in, seeing the people's names, not just the number of subscribers, you kind of don't, you don't feel the problem. Do, do you kind of, do you feel that way? Yeah, I 100% like in my own way can recognize what it is that you're pointing to. In every big launch that I have been in and been a part of, I have felt in my bones that this is going to crack it. This is going to hit it. And at any point where I've been in a launch that has not, like that feeling just wasn't there. There's a level of like ease and a level of like fluidity where mm -hmm. you have all of your ducks in the row and you know that like everything here here is solid that there's no way that it is not going to hit and I think that's like the feeling that you're pointing to um yeah. and if we go back to like automating or not automating a v1 I think like that's a really smart thing to do just in general like yeah. you want to run something live for a handful of times so that you can work out the kinks of it and the 
Yeah, automate something when you know you have proof of concept on it. Automate something when you know it is like really smooth and really good and really gorgeous. It's like, in my own mind, that is caring for your audience. It's like mm. putting something in front of them that is really smooth and really gorgeous and that has been worked on and polished to get to a place where it's like, this is amazing. We can just like let this run because it's going to be really good for my people. Yeah, yeah. I think th this was something that was quite interesting. So I, I, um, I, I like to be a part of the the health side of things, and I like to be a part of the um, uh, the uh, longevity thing that we talk about a lot. And I take a lot of supplements. And and um, one thing that I did the other just kind of goes back to being conscious, maybe consciousness in what you're doing. Instead of just stepping away, you would know the people that come through. Because if you were to do, and I'll pull back, but if you were to like do a launch and you see the people, oh, there's Susie, there's Anna, there's, you know, there's Jesse, there's Ryan. You can, f if, if you see it, you can kind of like feel their problems. You can like look down the line and be like, I remember their issue. I remember their issue. And their issue. But when you just throw data at it, you really aren't connected. And I remember this time I was down downstairs and I, if I showed my vitamin <laughs> section, it's like, geez, Jason, you're like a walking supplement. But what I did was I got to the point where I had so many supplements that I started taking them every day. And I kind of thought back for a second and I was like, what's that placebo effect? And so what I did is I took a piece of paper and I printed out all the different supplements that I had. And then what I did is I actually, re I actually typed out the reasons that I took the supplement. And what I started to do is before I took the supplement, I would read why I was taking it. And I was trying to put myself in a place where I was like, I'm connected to it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm involved in this process and there's an intention on why I'm taking it. And I think that what you're sharing right now is so important. That's why I'm sticking on it. Cause I think you nailed it. And that is that there's a connection between your version one that you will look back on and go, I remember why, why it was like that. And I think also right. when you scale, you probably would say, Oh, I see why it, <laughs> that's why it didn't work. <laughs> yeah. You had another yeah. really good one and you were saying creating 150,000 in a launch, then creating 75,000 in your next launch is nothing more than the world giving you an opportunity to understand the difference between the two. Let's unwrap that for a second. I thought that was quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's, that's what I believe about an experience like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, if... I run ads like a part of what I do is uh, buying media and uh, I know that the data is always going to tell me where things are falling off and so it's that same kind of mentality in a launch that brings in 150k or a launch that brings in 500k and then drops down to uh, another like a smaller element in the smaller piece it's like there was something that we missed the second round that we had the first round. And that contrast is a really valuable experience where you could look, this is what we did here. This is what we did not do here. I remember there was a launch where it was one of the first ones that I had hit hundred K in it. And uh, the client wanted immediately to jump to 200 K. And I was like, amazing. Like, let's do that. Let's figure that out. But there were a handful of things that we did in that first launch launch that did uh, that would have been close to 150 130 somewhere within that ballpark and the next launch that we did for her would have been about 65 something like that but the problem was in that second launch is that we were so jazzed about the first launch that we stopped making logical decisions. We stopped looking at the data and started going after like shiny object syndrome. And so we changed the offer that we were launching. We built new infrastructure that looking back was more designed to build momentum over the long term. It didn't have any like use or function in decreasing cost per lead or bringing in more leads. Had it continued to run for the long term, like sure, it would have built considerable momentum very quickly, but that's not, that wasn't a short term strategy. And mm -hmm. so it was the wrong strategy for the outcome that we were looking for. 
And there were a handful of little things like that, that we had just lost sight of because we were so excited about what we had just done and the possibility about what was in front of us. And so what I took from that was like, here, stay really grounded and mm. stay really humble with what you were doing. Like past victories do not guarantee future wins. And so continue to look at what you have done and where you are going and make it logical, grounded, settled decisions. Mm -hmm. I think that that's pretty interesting because we tend to, um, when something works, I'm going to follow that pattern with you. When something works, we think that doing more is going to make it better. Right. And this maybe pulls into an interesting conversation. And I think that maybe you can debunk this one because I think it's something that I talk with people about a lot as well is, is that we start to create more problems. And the thing that I think maybe you would do this with media buying and everything like that is people think after they maybe get one success, like, oh, well, there's not enough people out there. And I think that that is something that people are thinking the word of like market cap, if we would use it in a, in a financial sector, but people think the market is done, but you did something to get that market to buy. And I think that maybe the conversation we could talk about is like, how many customers are really out there? I mean, there's really an abundance. There really isn't, you're not going to, and maybe we could discuss this, but you're probably not going to get to the bottom of the well before you get to the amount of money that you want. I mean, unless it's like $7 billion or something like that. So I guess I'm talking I mean, about I people that assume they can't go, like it doesn't go deeper. There's not enough customers, you know? I would immensely call bullshit on that. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> no, I'm, agree I I'm agreeing with you. I think that what I'm saying is you would be able to, uh, a great conversation here would be debunking that statement that people feel that way. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of different, like there's a handful of different directions that my head immediately wants to go. And so let me go one way and then circle back and go yeah. a different direction. But so one of the issues that people run into around uh, hitting uh, high cash launches and then being able to main high, or maintain high cash launches is their traffic source. And so what I will see people often do is uh, like, launch a new product every month to the same audience. And uh, that tends to be risky for, a, like, it tends to be risky. Um, you are risking profits by putting a new product out to market all of the time, um, rather than improving an existing product. Like you're, you're minimizing user experience for like short-term gains. Mm -hmm. um, but, if you have a finite audience, if you keep pushing the same offer to them again and again and again, like they're, they're going to get it. You're going to burn them out. Um, like you might even get to a point where you piss them off. And so traffic and like where someone's traffic source comes from is really what unlocks repeatable, consistent, high cash launches. Um, mm. And for 90 plus percent of coaches or people in the online space, that means ads. It means paid advertising. And there's a smart way to go about that and build systems in someone's business. But even without ads, I mean, you have ads on multiple different platforms. You could do YouTube, you could do LinkedIn, you could do TikTok, you could do Facebook, you could do Instagram. Like there's so many different streams where you could get attention through just paid traffic. And if we're not talking about paid traffic, I mean, there's JVs, there are like, there's a paid, or sorry, there's PR, there is like a different sources of content. And so if you are posting on the feed, could you also post in stories? Like there's so many different avenues to help gather attention. And if you look at the industry that we are in, it is a growing industry. Like we are getting more attention, not less attention. And so it's really how much of it, that attention are you capitalizing on? Mm -hmm. What, what do you say to, what's your thoughts is as we go, it's all the lingering conversations. You brought up Turkey, which I've, I've been there. That's a massive airport, by the way. I mean, if you want to get stuck in a, if you want to get stuck in an airport, like Turkey's the place to be. Like it's so big. Like I remember sitting like on one side, I'm like, holy smokes, this thing doesn't end. Um, 
And I just lost my thought. <laughs> I started thinking about that airport. And I remember eating a sandwich that I got that was that looks like a massive bakery in the middle of the whole airport. And then I'm like, so now I got stuck in Turkey right now in my mind. Um, <laughs> uh, traffic sources. Um, wh what are some of the ones that you like? Uh, do you like to stick in Facebook? Um, are you find some resilience in different areas? I know what my question was now, but we can talk about traffic sources till we get there. No, ask me your question. Ask me your question. I won't forget. Um, and then I just lost it. Jeez, this is going twice. Oh no! Um, <laughs> I know. Hey, you know what? If you don't, you don't write all these down, so I try to anchor them in my brain as I go. Um, let's see. I ha I had a really good one for you. Well, anyways. Um, yeah, trap. It'll come back. But traffic sources. I think that. Traffic. Um, yeah. What What is it that people? I think you hear. You know. Oh, my offer's not working, and they just go get a bunch of traffic. Um, this is a commonality. I think with anything. I mean, I think I did this in sunglasses i did this in apparel um and there's a couple pieces that you're missing what what are some good ways that people can find actual traffic yeah okay so i think what you just said it was really interesting you've laid out a couple different questions here so let me do my best to hit on all of them um for traffic i largely focus on facebook and instagram there is enough traffic there for me to satiate like client needs and so it is more than fine um are there other traffic sources that eventually i could get into yeah absolutely Absolutely, but it's not a major necessity at this moment. So it's just not something that I hang out with. Um, largely when it comes to traffic, we focus on uh, paid traffic and also like the individual's warm audience. Um, when you're talking about an offer, if someone has an offer that is not converting and so they think that they just need more traffic, that is something that I spend a lot of time talking about because paid traffic is really just throwing gas into the fire. And so I do not suggest, do not recommend that people look at paid traffic until they get to a place in their business where they don't feel like they need it. And a couple of years ago, that could be like a 10K months, but obviously the traffic landscape has changed and so now it's generally around 20k months 25k months where if you can do that organically then you are in a good place to start looking at traffic and turning up the fire and do you actually like to do a launch like a mini launch through organic Yes, 100%. The entire objective is to like get proof of concept as you are going. And so you're minimizing risk. And by the time you do 100K launch, you're like, okay, cool. I've got all of these ducks already lined up. We know that they work. We know that this is solid. And so we can just focus on scaling it at that point. But it's a, like proof of concept throughout the entire process, 100%. Yes, always get proof of concept. There is... A conversion rate optimization theory, like a CRO theory that goes test before you test. And so minimize as many variables as you can before you do the thing that you want to do. <laughs> and this goes back, oh my gosh, April, this goes back to your patience. Uh, yeah, yeah. It does. It's like it goes back because this is slow, and right? Yeah. I, yeah, and because uh, it, it's slow, it's painful. And like, you're going to have hiccups throughout the process. It's like, yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. exactly. It's kind of funny you say that. It's painful. I, I, I think that, well, there's two sides of it. It's accepting that's going to be difficult. It is painful, right? And, and I think that those that kind of go through it, just accept that those are kind of punches in the face. But I think people right. that have not gotten to some maybe levels anywhere in, in business, they, they, there is a kind of a warp drive that happens. And you've probably seen it multiple times where it's kind of like, it's not working. And then all of a sudden you're pressing and you're pressing. And then there's like this. And then that's kind of, yeah, we could yeah. use the universe saying, I'm, I've got your back. You're just going to have to maybe do a little bit more of the work, but I got you. <laughs> here's, here's proof that it works, but now I'm going to show you, you got to do the work. <laughs> What are, what are yeah, some of the, I think that... go ahead. No, no, I, I just appreciate and agree with the sentiment that you were putting out. That's all I was going to say. Oh yeah. Um, what would be the fundamentals? Like, let's say that somebody's going to start the launch, the fund, maybe like four pillars of if they were like, Hey, we're going to, I'm going to talk with April. What should I have? What ducks should I have in a row that when they mm -hmm. actually meet up with you, um, that, that you could execute the best, like perfect scenario. I mean, everybody comes in and probably has yeah. talks with you and then everything like that. But let's say it was like a perfect scenario 
they could prepare and then they'd meet with someone like you. What would those couple of pillars that were ready? Because I'm sure there's a lot of optimization you do with them, but there's pillars that would make your job a lot easier. What, what would some of those be? Yeah, so the things that I look for in people who are ready to scale their launches is that they have a level of reoccurring revenue into their business, um, that they have a, a validated group program. So they have a group program that has proof of concept on it, that they have social proof on it, that they have run it a handful of times. Um, I look for people who have validated lead magnets and lead gen funnels. And so they have like data on that funnel. They know that it works and that it converts. Um, people who have at least a little bit of support in their business, even if it's just like a VA, um, mm -hmm. but VAs, ops people, like other systems in their business, if that makes sense, where their back end mm -hmm. is organized and it's not all duct taped together. Um, but those, I would say, are like some of the primary things that I pay attention to. Um, what are on a on a personal side, um, what I'm getting, I, I like to pull vibes from people. Sometimes I, I've always like, oh, I get some good vibes. You, you seem to someone that en enjoys life as well. And I think that um, something that I'm getting that you probably could share with people is, um, there it goes that, um, hitchhiking and doing all those things. Um, I've lived in Asia, spent a lot of time in Asia, I've traveled alone a lot. Um, what are some things that you learned about traveling um, that has made you a better human? Oh, a lot. Um... Yeah, a lot. I think, if anything, it's made me more tolerant and more empathetic and more accepting that it has allowed me to be okay with like the impermanence of things, like here, not attachment theory. Um, <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, I would say those are some of the primary things, just like traveling and interacting with so many different people from so many places and so many different walks of life and so many like get different socioeconomic backgrounds is like, here. life is really gorgeous and it's really beautiful and it's really diverse and like that is okay. That's okay. That's a really interesting statement that you said that it, like it, it, um, we kind of get jammed up on what how we think people should live. And I think that what you just said was really cool. It's like, it's okay that we're different. Yeah. I think that's yeah. a really interesting. Yeah, I think that's an interesting, um, interesting statement. Do, do you find certain sectors um, that do better in launches? Um, uh, what was his name? Jeff Walker, do you remember him? Uh, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, he's like uh, ooh, one of the big guys in the launch world for sure. Yeah, he was. I think he was one of the originals. I come back from early internet days, and Jeff Walker was the yeah. launch guy. He was the guy that was yeah. the launch guy um, that taught people launches and things. And I think that um, some of those fundamentals have obviously bred guys like people like you and things like that. Um, do do you get to uh, do you get to? It seems like you have a group of friends that you hang out with a lot. Do you do you? Uh, I think this is important for people to know that you have like other things that you do. What are, what are some other things in 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 spaces that you enjoy um, in life? Because I'm a firm believer that we shouldn't just make money. We should make stories. Yeah, and not only should we make stories, <laughs> we should also have outside accolades. And what I mean by that is you're going to look back and you're going to say, this is why I like fighting and why I like martial arts and stuff. Cause I can look back and say, I used my body. I used oh, my yeah. body, you know, what are some things? I mean, are you a hiker? What, what are some of the things that you enjoy outside of doing launches? Yeah. Uh, I like a lot. <laughs> um, I like random shit. That is my absolute favorite if someone's like hey you want to do something it's like yep I want to do this random thing that I have no idea what I am doing that is my favorite um I like dancing I like holographic like I like parties um I like psychedelics <laughs> I like beaches I like motorcycle rides there's a ton that I like it's uh I tell people all the time so I've ridden a lot of motorcycles ridden Harleys probably over a hundred thousand miles under my tail and I mean the, the thing isn't it's really interesting because it's not riding motorcycles isn't so much sitting on the motorcycle. It's, it's freedom. You just feel yeah. free. And I think yeah. that what you're sharing with his arts 
And I think a lot of business owners should get more involved in the arts. I think more business owners, because you're crafting something, you're creating something. And I think that people would realize that they're more interested in the arts than they are just in business. Because if you were to learn an art, dancing is a great example. Um, you're going to go out there and dance, which means you're going to shake your, your hips and you're going to move your, your shoulders and you're going to show some kind of rhythm. And then there's just like one layer above it, you know? And then it's like, hey, you can actually take this just a little bit serious and then you could be a little bit better of a dancer. Um, do, you, do you like to get into those arts yourself? I mean, no. Like music and things like that? It's not really something that I've developed. There have mm. been like elements where, yeah, I have like the start of a lot of those different skill sets, but not yeah. something that I have ever like consciously put effort into. I mean, right now being in Mexico, I am spending a lot of time learning Spanish and it is coming very slow. And so there's a level of like uh, resilience and tenacity that is required in any kind of new skill set. But I like short answer to that question. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I don't think that's that, but I think that's a great example. I think that, um, I guess what I'm getting is like, as you're traveling, you're picking up these different skills. It's like Spanish is, is a great, I mean, it's a great language to learn, uh, especially if you're, well, I'm in California. So we, we have a lot of the, we have a border. We have a lot of people that come over. And I think that, um, okay. one thing I learned, and I think that you probably would share this as well, is that after you've traveled a lot and maybe you learn a little bit of the language, like all of a sudden you're kind of like in it now <laughs> like you're kind of like like as if there's a barrier without the language are you finding that like that you're learning some of the language and then you go out and you speak it and then it's almost like they open a door for you are you, are you finding that as well I mean, my Spanish is not that good. It is not that good. So I'm getting to the place where I'm starting to understand more complex sentences that people are speaking around me. Whereas a couple months ago, I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what word are you on right now? Um, right now, what I'm learning is more like office things, like how to talk about your day and what you do in your days. Again, like they're still really basic, really simple sentences, but I can go out and I can like hear things that people are talking about. And I'm just like, oh, I, I know what you just said right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, now I know you're not talking trash about me because I know that was a good thing. Because now I caught it. I, I lived in Thailand and I decided to learn some of the language. And we say that's only so much. I lived there long enough. And I realized, and it's kind of the same scenario you're in, I recognized that I was going to be here for a little while. So why don't I just add it a little bit? And what I would do is I had a, a thing. I would try to add four or five words a week. And so what I would do is I would just practice those every single week. And then when I would hear those five words, that's that's all it took after a combined amount of time, I started to kind of go, okay, okay. And then I would go out there into the restaurants and stuff. And the restaurants are great for you to practice your Spanish, by the way, because it's like, you know, just interacting on those couple of things. But the mm -hmm. eyes, that their eyes light up that you're trying. I think that's a fascinating right, thing about, yeah. about, about traveling is that like you just try. Yeah. And that means you know. so much for sure. I get that. It does. It does. Yeah. What, what are some of your goals going into this next couple of years? Um, I think that there's some challenges that people are going to have ahead of them. And I think that you have, I, I can tell you're confident. You have a lot of the, the skill sets that are there underneath it. Um, what are some of your goals over the next couple of years? Maybe bigger goals, things that are outrageous. Yeah, so within the next year or so, I would anticipate that I'll know what a million dollar launch looks like. I would imagine within the next like year and a half to two years, I'll know how to hit them consistently and repeatedly. Um, that's like the primary thing that I am working on right now is like million dollar launches. That is really the only thing I want to crack. <laughs> and if that happens within like the next uh, within this year, within the next 12 months, somewhere within that ballpark, like that would be an immense win. Like that would be amazing. And I think the thing that's cool is you have a vibe that comes across that you're using the monetary of a million dollars, but I don't feel the money in your conversation. This is really cool conversation. Um, I think that you also can tell the impact that you'll make with that million dollars. Yeah, that's, that's largely it. I mean, while the money is cool, the money does cool things, lets you do some cool things. It's really like 
what it does uh, for like that business owner's audience, what it does for that person's life, what it does for their capacity to make like good things happen in the world. One of the things that I think is really interesting and like I really love is giving people the opportunity to live lives that are more true, more free, more honest to them um, than not. And like that's uh, where the drive for like bigger money wins comes from. It's like that's an opportunity for someone to live a more honest version of their life. And like, because what does that they're, look like? they're not caught in the matrix. If we were to use that term that we could use, they, they, they allow themselves to get past a certain level and then they can actually be free. Right. And freedom is an interesting thing. Um, maybe you could give us a story of maybe like, you don't have to give their name or anything, but maybe give us a story of someone's launch, you know, how you, maybe you met them a certain way and maybe walk us through like, Hey, you know, I met this person. They were, they were selling this. Maybe you can walk through kind of a story. I think it's, you know, show people and then they can kind of relate maybe that would help out yeah i remember a client uh, uh this would have been like a bunch of years ago now like 2019 uh, early 2019 would have been when i met this client and at that point like 100k years was like that was effort to get to um, and she would like come into my world. We would do a project together. It wasn't in a space where she could put me on retainer. And so she would, we would do a project. She would go back out into the world. Um, and every, like consistently every project that we did just like knocked out of the park. And so she would always come back. And I remember the first time I launched with this client was a brand new program that was 10 K. And she was uh, like pregnant and just about to have a baby. And so there was a lot riding on it. And that was uh, her first launch that hit 100K. And uh, from that point, like things just really started to shift for her in like these really big and really gorgeous ways. I mean, now she is uh, in the process, like has a personal assistant just hanging out and helping with her life and like taking care or helping taking care of her baby her team has grown substantially in such a short period of time her audience has grown substantially in such a short period of time like there has been so much that has changed so rapidly for her mm, it's yeah. it's really really fulfilling to be able to see and witness yeah, I was going to say, how did that make, I mean, you know, her victory, but what, what did that do for you? I mean, it's what it's all about, isn't it? It's like uh, being able really cool. to see here what the changes in things people do. Like when someone gets to live lives that are more honest for them, what do they do? And like what feels true to their heart and like what do they want to bring to their world? Like what could they have not done if they hadn't decided that they were worth the work and that they were willing to put in and do what it takes to get them to where they wanted to be. Mm -hmm. I think that is an incredible transformation. And I think that that's what people look for. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think that uh, what you're sharing is a path and we sit on this internet and we kind of do these things and you know, type in text and you kind of go that route. But I think what you're doing is giving people a path. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, I, I, I always like to say, like, give give me a framework and I'll make the mistakes in the framework. Let me, let me give me the framework and then I'll make mistakes in there. What I think that you're doing um, in, from what I hear from you is that you're allowing them an area where, and maybe this is the way I place it, but I'm like, if, if you, if you give me a framework with padded walls around it, like I'm not going to get hurt, but I'm going to keep going the same direction at least. And I think that when you don't have somebody like yourself on a launch or something like this, what ends up happening is you tend to, oh, here's the path. You open a different door, you end up all these different places, and then you don't yeah, think yeah. you don't think you're creative enough. But if you right. create the confinements and the restrictions, people are quite creative actually in the restrictions and confinements yeah. if they are. Um, yeah. this 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 is this is really cool. Um, one of the things that um, uh, I think that in this type of process is that you're giving somebody, a, a catapult. And I think that that's difference. I, I, um, I share with people all the time it, when, for me, if, if business is like slow, 
I know that this has been debunked. Everybody just say it, but for a long time, people say sharks. <laughs> if they, if what is it? If they don't swim, they die. It's like that's like this thing. Uh, yeah, swim, okay, okay, yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. I don't think that's true. I heard it was like a myth. <laughs> okay. And I, and I've I been rolling. Know. I don't know. I've been roll. I've been rolling with this one for a while. So let's roll with it, right? So we're gonna stick. With it. <laughs> I'm sure that there is a shark out there that didn't move and he died. So we'll go that route. But the reason I say that is because. <laughs> I think that people are looking for that movement. And once you get them into that movement, people can, can can grab that momentum and go. And I think that's that's what you're doing. You're giving them the actual launch of proving that there's a big enough marketplace out there that you now can build the second layer of the business. Right. And I think that that's, that's what you're doing. And I think you're doing a really good job. Um, this, this has been an incredible podcast. I think you've given a lot of detail for everybody that's on this episode. This is going to show out a bunch of really good shorts and things like that. How do people find you, April? You have such a opening uh, spirit. How do they find you, get serious, and do a $100,000 launch? Yeah. So Instagram is probably the easiest way to find me. My handle is just at growth by funnels. I am growth by funnels everywhere, basically. <laughs> um but I would say Instagram is probably the easiest place to track me down and just like shoot me a DM. Um, yeah, that would be, that would be that. Well, this is awesome. This has uh, been a great episode. April, I appreciate the uh, conversation that we had came across. Awesome. I'm sure a bunch of people are going to talk to you. This is another episode of the moved entrepreneur evolved podcast. Make sure that you go back and check out other people. Just like April, we have amazing guests. Each one of them has an incredible story with tactics involved. So with that, thanks a lot, April. You've been an incredible guest. I hope to have you back sometime. Thanks a lot. Thank you. If you like this episode, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just like Nike is to athletes, Moved is to entrepreneurs.